Well, welcome. Well, we're here today with a Tara Ruby, and we're so excited to have her on. Tara brings an enormous amount of experience, and really excited to hear what she has to share today about photography and her business. So, welcome, Tara. We're so excited to have you. Hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit, a bit about you first to all of our audience, and then we're going to dive right in. Okay. okay. So, uh, Tara has pioneered a style of family, newborn, maternity breastfeeding and birth photography that has earned awards from organizations such as WPPI, PPA, the National Association of Professional Child Photographers, as well as within the Army community. Among hundreds of international publications, her photography has been shared on Facebook over 3.5 million times, that's awesome, <laughs> and featured in Vanity Fair, USA Today, Cosmopolitan, Self Magazine, The Huffington Post, Time Magazine, and the Army Times, and many more. She has also taken a new role as a director in the Georgia Professional Photographers Association and plans to help promote small veteran-owned businesses and photographers and to support other military spouses and veteran photographers. So welcome, Tara. We're so Welcome. excited to have you. Thank you. <laughs> that is quite a <laughs> it, it sounds so awesome when somebody reads it out loud. Like, yes, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we start off by you just sharing a little bit with everyone about yourself, your photography, your photography business, and maybe something um, that people don't know about you and your business. Oh, oh and my business. Um, I'm a military vet. Uh, I served in the Air Force. I'm actually a disabled vet, and my husband's active duty, so we live a very active military community life, and my son is a Virginia Military Institute, so um, it's going to keep going, and everybody in the family is pretty much somehow related to the military, and we are currently at Fort Stewart in Georgia. We spent seven years in El Paso. That's where a lot of my taking off and, and millions of Facebook views happen. Um, we've been all over. I literally have been all over the world. I myself was stationed in Europe and then we've been all over the U.S. So it's been a, an interesting progression because you don't ever really stay still very long and that, that works. I mean it's there's some challenges and I'm sure we'll get to that but um, I definitely never get bored and we're always meeting new people and in the military community there's no shortage of some type of photography need from birth stories to maternities to family sessions, homecomings. I mean, you name it, we can pretty much be the all photographer for a family. Um, and the cool thing about that is I've made some amazing clients. I have clients all over the US. I have clients that are not even here in the US right now. Um, so that has given us quite an interesting perspective because we don't just get stuck with one genre. We kind of get tossed everywhere. <laughs> like I've shot concerts. I've stood beside Billy Ray Cyrus. Uh, it, it's just been an amazing, amazing journey so far. And with us being still active duty for at least probably another 10 years, I don't see this slowing down anytime in the near future. Um, I have three kids. They're a little bit older. Obviously, my older son's in college. And then I have one that's almost 16 and my little girl's going to be 13 next month. So Aww. we we don't have babies anymore. So I'm not ready to be a grandma, uh, but I'm, I'm getting there because my oldest is 19. So I think why I like newborns because I can play with them, but they're not mine and I can give them back. <laughs> so newborn, newborns are my favorite. I love doing newborn photography. Um, and then now that we're here in Georgia, I love fishing. Like absolutely fell in love with being out on the water. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And we've, we've definitely learned to enjoy free time, free time that's away from the internet, free time that it's away from the cell phone and really coming back to just enjoying that family time especially since my other two are getting a little bit older uh, and they're probably not going to hang out with mom too much longer. So, yeah. Hold on. You, you enjoy time away from the internet. Is that, <laughs> I didn't, I think that was possible in our society. <laughs> yes. Yes. We, we have made a pact that if we're out doing anything water related, we put our phones away one because I have a notorious uh, habit of dropping my phone in water. So I think that's Ooh. what really started it is that mom should probably yeah. keep her phone away from the beach because it always goes in yeah. the beach. And then we realized that it, it's really nice to have that constant pressure of needing to answer the phone. My husband's active duty, so he has to keep his phone near him. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just kind of like a, we can't get away from that. That's just a requirement. That's our life. But when you're both on your phone all the time, you get nothing done as a couple. You get nothing done as a family. 
Um, so we have spent, especially since we moved here to Georgia, we have really put a focus back on that is, is taking care of ourselves as, especially as a, a husband and wife, like mm-hmm. the pressure of, of him being active duty and me owning a business was really starting to get to us. And yeah. we took this move as an opportunity to kind of shift focus just a little bit and really focus on us. And it's been incredible. Like it, it's an amazing adventure. So <laughs> it's like we're that's, almost that's married great. again all over again. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I think that's great to hear because I, I even find that even Melissa and I, we being in the same business, it's so easy just for it to take over our lives. Mm-hmm. And so in, in our own path, we had to be very purposeful. It sounds like you guys had to be very purposeful as well. Like this extra time, this alone time or away from technology or personal time doesn't ever happen unless you make it happen. Mm-hmm. Like you have to be purposeful yeah. and yeah, schedule it. Our world is so reliant on that constant. I mean, you hear a ding or a beep. I mean, even everybody has that constant Verizon cell phone ring. So if we're out on the mall or we're out shopping or walking around and somebody else's phone, you instantly look at your phone because you associate yes. noise to your phone. And we have decided that we didn't want to be like that. We don't want our kids to be like that. We definitely don't want mm-hmm. our grandkids to be like that. And you're right. The only mm-hmm. way to make that happen is to say, we're going to make a change and how right. do you make that happen? And then how do we make it happen to make sure that it doesn't affect us on a business level too? Because our clients Absolutely. think that we need that. You know, I just, like we just met with the CEO of PPA um, and we had a conversation mm-hmm. about that with him, about our world, thanks to Amazon. He, you know, he brought this out to our attention. Amazon has made everybody think that we need a 48 turnaround, like a 48 hour, because that's how fast you get your Amazon package. So when you order something from Amazon, like you get it. So we're being taught that the, we have to have this constant, instant, you know, connection with people. And maybe I'm going to take it back a little old school and maybe it'll work for some of my clients and then maybe it won't for some, but I have to have some distance. Um, and it's been absolutely incredible for my relationship. So oh, I love that. Awesome. I love that. And that actually leads into the next thing we wanted to ask is, with all the, the challenges with, you know, all the noise and everything else going on, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've had to face in your business and how, what steps are you taking to kind of overcome them? Especially with you, uh, you doing a lot of moving. I know you and I talked right. about that before. You're mm-hmm. constantly on the move. Oh, it's, it was, it's been insane. When I went viral, my husband was getting ready to go out to the field. So for him to go to the field, he has to go through all of his army equipment, pull it out of that packet. I usually help him because it's not like a couple articles. It like takes over the living room articles of stuff. Um, and I literally had to tell him, hold on, I'm on the phone with like, you know, the vibe I can't answer right now. So it was kind of an interesting <laughs> concept. And, and our life is always ruled by the military. So it doesn't matter what's going on with my business. It doesn't matter what's going on with us personally, the army rules for life. And so that has been a huge challenge. Um, Mm -hmm. Not, I don't want to say to get over just a challenge to accept because that's my life um, and that I can't change that. And the move was very challenging because I think I was at the peak. Like if you could be at the peak of the peak, I was there. And then as soon as we got, like I had just gotten into a studio commercial space, just built it out I literally I like did everything we built walls we laid floors had it just ready to go with scheduling Christmas sessions I mean we were doing everything that we're told in our business that we should be doing I was on the track and then we got the notice that we were moving and we were moving Mm -hmm. in 80 days so it it was just you know sit down and figure this out and stay married in the process and don't argue and don't fight and you know, you just have to do it and you have to swallow yeah. a lot of emotions. Um, so I've learned to only cry when necessary. <laughs> and I don't know if that's good or bad, you know, like sometimes you're like, oh my God, this is horrible. But, you know, we just kind of take it in stride. And, and then I think looking back now that that helps because I didn't get emotional. I didn't let myself get overwhelmed. I see a lot of people in our community get so overwhelmed with things. And sometimes I'm like, it's such a small little thing and you're so overwhelmed. Right. Um, and, and, and so I've had to kind of pull back and and say not everybody is not emotional like I am or not as attached, but we've really learned to just keep our emotions in check. And then that Mm -hmm. helps too, because when you have a big challenge, no matter what, it's so easy to get overwhelmed with your emotions. Um, Mm -hmm. Just accept that that's how it is. You know, just go scream, throw a couple punches into a pillow, take a hot shower (laughs) and, and then figure out what's the best way to do this. Like how do we conquer this challenge? And, and move on with it and in like the long run now we're here we're settled we're moved in 
I found that I love being on the water. So, you know, sometimes it's so hard when you're going through it, you know, you hear it all the time, especially if you go to church. Mm -hmm. If you're on that, you know, if you're down in the valley or you're up on the mountain or, you know, whichever direction they want to take it, it's bad. But you got to remember that on the other end of that, there might be something that's really amazing for you. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, keeping an emotion in check is Mm -hmm. super, super important, I think, for me. Yeah, no, I love that. And it's, it's a matter, like you said, it's kind of keeping it in check, keeping it in balance, you know, you're allowed to have those feelings, but then how do you let them kind of work into your business and keeping kind of, kind of putting your blinders on sometimes and then taking them off and allowing yourself when you do need to have that good cry that you can. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's definitely yeah. some moments that I think I've spent alone. And, and then when you get to, for, especially for a move, when you get to a new location, you're in a new location, you don't know anybody, they don't know you they don't know that you just went viral. Um, Sometimes Mm -hmm. they don't care that you just went viral. They want to know what your prices are, what you're going to offer, and how are you going to fit in. And we are in a different community. The conversation is different. Talking to individuals, just my clientele, like having a conversation with them is different. So Mm -hmm. I really had to like go out. (laughs) Like I couldn't sit at home. I couldn't cry. You have to go out to the community. You have to start talking to people. You have to start getting to know them. What do they want? How do they think? You know, what kind of things are important to them? It's different than my last location. Um, So in a good way, I had to go out. I couldn't sit at home. I couldn't be depressed. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, you know, have a pity party. Poor me. I've had to start all over again. I'm not saying that I Mm -hmm. didn't have those moments, but to get over that, I had to go out and start doing things. Um, and so now I, I, you know, I've made new friends and I've got some uh, pretty cool opportunities. I decided to be part of GPPA because I was like, I have to still stay in touch with photographers. Like I can't just, cause I really felt like we were here in the country. I have chickens. My neighbors have chickens uh, <laughs> and goats and I don't feel attached anymore. Um, mm-hmm. and then going back to taking away from the internet some, oh my, if, if I'm not attached to my friends and I'm not attached to my clients, and I take some internet away from my life. Like I'm really all by myself. (laughs) (laughs) But going out in public and actually talking to people, like they, you know, I'm, I'm in a community. It's very face to face. They don't want to send you an email. They want to talk to you on the phone and they actually want to have consultations, which is an interesting concept for me because El Paso wasn't like that. So it's just Mm. getting to know that new environment um, and working through, you know, all of those emotions that keep you wanting to stay at home. So, Love it. It's it's great to see. I, I think one of the key words probably is adaptability. Like you, it just seems that you you have to be very resilient to know that you're establishing something. You feel like you got your roots a little bit, but knowing that those are soft roots, right. and they potentially could be pulled up. and And I, I find it very very. It's great that you you knew you you, you jolted yourself at some point to say, okay, if I stay at home, because I think a lot of photographers like I. I even though they didn't, haven't moved, I feel like a lot of us as solopreneurs, we're isolated a lot. We might have a spouse, significant other, somebody that's going out the door that day. And then here we are, if we don't have a shoot or an event happening or if we're retouching images or like we're a very, like in an introverted you know, lifestyle in a way, like we're internal. And you can get, like, I find myself sometimes, I, I'm like, Melissa, I can need to get out of the house. Like, I'm, I'm going to get depressed. If, because I, I've been, I'm like, back to back on, like, editing images. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, you have to get dressed, put some, well, you don't have to put makeup on, but you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't, <laughs> you can't sit at home. And it's, it's an amazing concept because you change. And I think being, like you said, adaptability, being okay with change. Like, my business changed since we moved. Like, my what I want for my business has changed and that's okay. And it's okay to change Mm -hmm. and it's okay to change. I know um, Melissa and I have talked about this before. It's okay to not make as much money as I was making before. It's okay to say, I'm going to slow down. And I don't know if I really want to do as much as I did before, because I really enjoy my free time. Um, And, and having that. Okay. And, and even because I, and I'm very much like, I like to go out and I like to be social. I like to talk to people but I hate big crowds. Like I hate going out Mm -hmm. and being in the middle of the mall. Like it's not me. I'd rather, I'm an Amazon shopper. Um, But you have to get out and you have to start talking to people. And I think people believe that, oh, you're a photographer. You must be super social and you love to go meet new people. If they're my client, I'm all about it. If they're just a new person standing beside me at Walmart, I don't know if I really want to talk to them. Um, And Mm -hmm. that's okay. But you have to kind of get out of your shell because you'll never meet people 
you'll never get to know anybody. You'll never get to know your new community if you don't go do that. Um, so it was definitely a suck it up and we got to go do this. So, and then I think another challenge, and I'm still working through this is, do I really want to put too much effort into situating here? Because we know we're going to move again. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I we've talked about trying to stay here for as long as we could, because we really like it here, but we're military, so we know we're going to move. So that's a new challenge, because I've watched, you know, photographers, you know, for example, let's say Sue Bryce, she's, she's in LA and she's established and she'll never, I mean, she might move, but I'd be very surprised if she moves. And so she's very established and she can do so many amazing things because she knows that's where she's going to live. So I'm still working through that. Like, how do I make this the best that I can knowing that I'm going to have to move uh, and I'm going to have to do this all over again. And so you have to find ways and I'm still finding ways to stay super excited about that because <laughs> that's a still a constant <laughs> challenge. <clears throat> right. so, I mean, it's nice to be adaptable but you also have to know that these are limitations. I know this is a limitation for me. It's a limitation for my mindset. It's a limitation for my clients. I don't think that they're going to get the same from me because I know, because if you're not giving it a hundred percent, your clients aren't going to get a hundred percent. Absolutely. True. You can't Absolutely. lie your way through that. Like that's just how it is. Um, so I'm, I'm working through that constantly. And I have a husband who's a very literal husband. And he's not the emotional kind of person. I think that just comes along with being a soldier. Uh, and so we've sat down and had some very, you know, come to Jesus conversations about how this is, how this is going to play out and how we want it to work out and what we want, what we don't want. Um, but it, I think like it's number one thing, if nobody else takes anything away from this, it is okay to change and, that, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And if your business mm -hmm. is changing and you're okay with it and your family's okay with it, that's all that matters. It's true. I love yeah. it. I love and, it. And I, it, it sounds like it caused you, especially with these new habits, that the, the change caused you to internally reflect and go back to your why and your purpose. And like you said, like you did this mental shift where, okay, maybe I'm not going to make as much money. And instead of being depressed about it, um, you looked at it and say, where's the new opportunities here? And now you guys are out fishing. You're doing things you never did in your life and you're actually enjoying life. And, and yeah. You know. Now I have, there's a, a really... No, I don't think anybody here is going to watch this because they're all local fisher guys. So I can probably say this, but there's a really large <laughs> charter captain here. Um, he's the, the one that goes out fishing. He's the one that stays out really late. Everybody knows him. Um, and I've gotten the opportunity to meet him. And because of going out and forcing myself to go out, forcing myself to make new friends and make local friends, because those are the friends that know everybody in the community. So you kind of want those friends in your back pocket. Um, mm -hmm. I am found out that he's having twins and I will be doing his twin newborns. So oh. even though I'm having fun, I still always kind of find a way to make Funny. it work for me. So I was like, yeah. hey, right. I get to go fishing with him, which I love to do. Uh, I've made a new friend, him and his wife are amazing. She's thinking about even having me do her birth story. He's a local guy that everybody knows. So when I do their photos, mm -hmm. everybody's going to see them. Um, so you, right. you kind of, I think if you're a real true business owner, you're going to think of how do I turn, you know, and not in a selfish way, but how do I turn this around to make it work for me? Right. And so yeah. it, I didn't plan on doing that. Like I wasn't really enjoying this free time and the ability to do things. And I'm still like, it's being thrown in my lap again. And so I think if you're meant to do something, things like this will happen. Like it's just, they nice. just happen. I don't know how everybody's like, well, you just must be so social and you go talk to everybody. I'm like, no, I didn't arrange this one. This one came to me. So yeah. I I'm, I'm believe that if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing somehow, it's going to work out. Like, the, the law of attraction. <laughs> you made a choice. You made a choice to leave your house and to go out and go out of your comfort zone. I think a lot. I think, the, and I'm sure you might see it as well. When we go out and speak, I feel like the majority of the industry are introverts, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and everybody's just not naturally. Everybody assumes because of the camera. It's like no, we. A lot of us hide behind the camera. We they might give us the opportunity to be in a social event, but we're not the ones that are in the event that paid to be at the event, to be social with other people. We're there as a vendor typically, and we're hiding behind the camera. Even though we can work in an entire room, have those great experiences and everything, still we're, take the camera away and uh, we go into the corner. You know? Yeah, <laughs> don't know what to do, right? So, but just by you making that shift and going out, and, and you said so many valuable things real quick. I just want to uh, kind of circle back is that 
the one thing that's a common thread because we're we're only maybe about 20 minutes away from Dover Air Force Base, mm -hmm. um, which is a very large Air Force Base. And there is a very transient group of, I'd say, photographers that, that come in and sometimes they're supporting spouse photographers. They're coming in and they we have a local like Facebook group. So they all join the Facebook group and we hear. And I have to say that a lot of them struggle with adaptability where they don't take the time to learn a new market. They just go out the way that they did business somewhere else. Like, why aren't, isn't anybody paying these pricing or, you know, why isn't anybody doing in-person sales or blah, 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 you know, whatever it is. And they, they don't go and integrate with the community. Like they just want to be on social media and, but then their entire influence on social media is from where they used to be. Mm -hmm. They have like, they didn't go out and meet anybody new. So they don't have anybody new on their social media to tell them to work with them locally. And I so you, you, you created these opportunities. We, I am going to, I have, and Melissa and I had a, a very good conversation about this last week that my, I really truly believe that my goal and, and will I stop doing photography? No, like I'll never stop being a photographer unless, you know, my body says I can't. Um, mm -hmm. But I do believe there's a new goal for me is to go and work with these, these photographers because these are moms most of the time. Uh, not mm -hmm. all the time. Obviously we can't be too stereotypical, but most of them are moms. They have little ones at home. Their husband may or may not be deploying. He may be in and out of the field. He might be on a rotation where he's gone for a couple of weeks and comes home for a couple of weeks and working a real job. I hate when people say that, but to have a real job out in the world and work a nine to five somewhere is a very big challenge for them. So if photography is an outlet for them, it's a creative outlet. It gives them a chance to get out of the house. So they're not sitting at home with a screaming two year old. Um, it gives them the ability to bring in an income because it's really rough sometimes to not feel like you're, con you know, giving some kind of contribution to the relationship. You feel like you need to give money. Um, and so it, it just is a really, a, a very popular job for a lot of military wives and yeah. every military installation I've gone to every military installation I've visited has a collection of these local photographers that are all military related military spouses yeah. Even active duty moms that just want to do it on the side. Um, oh, yeah. and, and it's a very big challenge for us because our lifestyle is not the same as somebody who's established and is going to stay in one location for the rest of their lives. And our expectations are different because no matter how successful we are, we still come second to the military. And, and it will never mm -hmm. change. We are, no matter what, no matter what we're doing, no matter if I have a client scheduled that day or not, if my husband has something to do, I have to reschedule. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a different lifestyle and, and the expectations are very different. And you're right. My portfolio, when we moved here, I came from the desert. <laughs> like my, my <laughs> best sand photos were like white sands, which was an awesome location to shoot at. Uh, mm. Unless you're stationed there and all of your photos are on white sand and it's kind of boring. So I come here and my local community didn't want to see desert photos. They don't care that right. I have portfolio photos. Um, so getting out there and doing model calls and really swallowing it and doing some free sessions just to build to that new portfolio. Not that I didn't have a portfolio. I just needed to upgrade my portfolio um, and right. do, do things. And Something that's relevant. Swallowing yeah. pride happens a lot because you're like, I really feel like I deserve to be paid for my work. I'm, I do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm at that level where I know for a fact I should not be doing free sessions and I don't think that that's egotistical or trying to brag but when you're trying to upgrade your portfolio and you're in a new spot and they don't know you the best way to get that is free sessions and oh, yeah. I had to swallow my pride a lot uh, when I got here mm. and I'm like no I need to I need to go do the beach session and I need to go play in the woods and get some free sessions and those hanging moss photos that everybody likes here um and it's, it was, it was a challenge, but you can do it. You just have to suck it up and go do it. And like, it's right, like, right. Right. emotions, like put your emotions aside and like, I really got to go do this or I'm never going to get hired. Yeah. So it's interesting is even with your move, it's, it's the mindset that somebody that's even brand new needs to have. So they didn't not necessarily somebody that just relocated to another area, which you had to live through, but in a way, even as an experienced photographer, you had to put in that, like, 
a newbie, you know, mindset to be like, I need, I'm starting at zero. Mm -hmm. Like nobody in this town knows me. My portfolio is irrelevant. Even if it's top notch, it doesn't matter. It's not, it's not relevant to the trends locally. And you also just by nature, you know, come in that adaptability. You, we talk a lot about doing a competitive market analysis. So somewhere along there, you were like, okay, what's relevant local? Like, what are people buying? Pricing, you know, so pricing is, is the yeah. number one thing. I, you know, I, I say Sue Bryce a lot when I talk because I actually watch Sue Bryce and, and I listen yeah. to some of her uh, mentality. And, and I do believe that as the U.S. progresses, maybe eventually, if we hope and dream, there will be a price standard across the board. But there's not. <laughs> there's not. Yeah, so I, when I moved yeah. from El Paso, I was making, you know, I was very, very, very happy with my price list. I was getting mm -hmm. my price list without any concerns or questions. Um, it, there was never an issue. And then when we moved here, <laughs> same military community, but a completely different area. And they were like, mm -hmm. are you serious? I'm not paying that price. And yeah. I tried to lower it a little bit lower. And no, I still don't want to pay that price. And I'm like, but you don't understand. Like I'm worth that. I'm worth that. I know yeah. I'm worth that. And they're like, we don't care. You know, we don't care. Yeah. So yeah. then I really had to step back and say, okay, well, what is everybody else charging? Because holy cow. And it was a very big difference, but our cost of living is different here. It's a little bit, mm -hmm. not a little bit, it's, it's relatively cheaper here. And so mm -hmm. when you live right. in the, for a community um, and a community, I have a, a lot of the local little community towns. I don't even know if they're cities. They're like a, a one mm -hmm. red light stoplight area. They can't afford those prices. And so then it goes back to what do you want to offer to your client? Do you want to be that, high-end photographer that has one session a month i mean i like the free time right. but i really want more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah like or do you want to stay relatively busy um right like it look busy on facebook because then it goes back to that social media how busy do you look if you're really busy everybody right. wants to work with you um so there was a lot of factors that you have to really play with and you have to accept that the community is just a different community and the prices are different and what they're yeah. willing to do and pay for is different. Yeah. And, and that's something that I know some of the, the gurus out there, they're like, Oh no, no. You know, everybody like is sold on, you go on these Facebook groups and they see, you see $10,000 checks yeah. and $20,000 yeah. checks. And like, you know In what? IPS location, group? location, yeah. location. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. location, 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 right? Number one. And it's like, you know, you can be Louis Vuitton all day long, but you need to take a step back and say, Louis Vuitton doesn't put a store in every community. Yeah, that's very true. They're I mean, very, very, they're very exactly. particular. They know exactly where to put their brand. Yeah, because exactly. that's where the people are willing to spend the money. Yeah, there's no Louis so, Vuitton. Here. Like I love Kate Spade, yeah. and there's no Kate Spade here. I love Target. Yeah. There's no Target here. I mean, I just yeah. live in that kind of community. We have a Walmart, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And everybody and their mother mm -hmm. goes to Walmart, and you just have to accept that that's your community. Is it what I want for the yeah. rest of my life? No. Like I, I love mm -hmm. this area, but I don't know if we'll retire here. Um, but right. if this is what my cards are, I got to play my cards and I got to play them to the right. best as I can. So yeah. it's a law of supply and demand, Absolutely. you know, yeah. that you, you're being realistic. You're looking in, uh, even though that you can get that, that, that level, like you said, you could end up with the one client a month in this small community. And it's like, is that going to like, pay your bills or make you happy all year long by dealing with 12 clients all year, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, maybe for if, you're, sure. if you're getting that $30,000 check, maybe, you know, but, <laughs> right. but, yeah. exactly. but if, if that right. one person is like 1500, it might not, it's not going to, you know, you're not going to do well. Yeah. Um, and we're coming up so to taxes, I, I, so I'm sure we'll have another talk after we actually go through a different taxes. And see. <laughs> <laughs> So, so with all <laughs> with, with all your different experiences and you know what what you're going through currently and in the past what would you say would be one of the best pieces of marketing advice for photographers you've given a lot of information so far so um <laughs> anyone that's you know looking whether it's in marketing themselves in a new market or if you want to talk a little bit about some of the viral aspects what what would be some advice that you'd like to give i believe that instagram's taking over like I like Instagram better than Facebook. Um, in fact, I quit trying to look at my Facebook numbers because it's just not worth it. Like Facebook has so mm -hmm. many stupid algorithms and they mess with your stuff. And they still tell me that like 60% of Facebook views that I'm getting right now is still back in El Paso. Um, so I could either stare at those numbers and feel like that's going to, you know, market me and make me go forward and 
beat my head against the wall in the whole process or I can just give it up. So mm. I post on Facebook, but I really do like Instagram. Um, and I believe Instagram is good because of hashtags. Um, that mm. being the hashtag, learn your hashtags. As soon as you move, as soon as we knew we were moving and we were coming here, we posted on Instagram and we did all of the research on hashtags. There's a, an app called Hashtagger. Um, and I use that because it'll actually, you can go in and put a hashtag, say, um, say I did a beach maternity session. So I can go and open the hashtagger app and I put beach maternity and it pulls up all of the relevant hashtags related to beach maternity. And so I can cool. see actively currently like the ones that go along with that and learning hashtags and then learning I, I do watch my insights on instagram i know what days are good i know that mm. most of my clientele are between like 24 and 30 and they're women which isn't a surprise mm. but getting to know who's looking at your social media too i think a lot of times um i've had a, a lot of photographers it, even bigger name photographers have come back and said i don't know how your instagram stays as good as it does and i'm like because i watch it like you have to learn mm. it. you have to learn how it works you have to learn what hashtags are in your area which hashtags are your clients looking at ask your clients like don't be afraid to ask your clients um i think i'm going to start doing surveys here with my clients too and i can do that with 17 hats i can do a questionnaire and send it to them and you know Perfect. how did you find me you that's the first thing how did you find me i knew here so how did you find me how did you know about me um did you have a friend did that friend refer you how did that friend know me um so getting to really have that conversation and don't be afraid i think we're we think we have to be a business owner and we have to act like this strict business person all the time. And they're people just like us. So sit okay. down and have a conversation with them. Talk to them. Yeah. Um, a conversation. <laughs> what is that? Going back to the right? Like, I don't want to converse. With my <laughs> I spend three hours in there with them while we do newborns. And you have to come up with some way to talk to them for three hours. <laughs> so yeah, oh. yeah. talk about like, you know, how do you find photographers in your area? Like, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Um, so we have some interesting conversations, but I love Instagram. I, I just think that that's mm -hmm the best way and I think don't get overwhelmed with all of the ways to market like there's Pinterest and there's Twitter I hate Twitter that's I don't understand <laughs> the point of Twitter maybe I'm not a Twitter fan <laughs> but you know you find that one outlet that works for you and there might be people that love Facebook um, I have a VIP Facebook group I know that they say that that makes it easier to talk to your clients but I really forget to like post in there <laughs> like I forget that mm -hmm. I have it so then you have to figure out you know, what works for you? What are you going to remember to do? Like what mm -hmm. can you make in the daily lifestyle? I wake up and I look at my Instagram right before I go to bed. I look at my Instagram. Um, so that for me is just my marketing tool and it's working. I mean, I'm averaging two, right around 200 likes per post. So I'm in that mm -hmm. nice. more, but for me in this community, that works out really good. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then finding that niche and then just keeping it up and making your brand look the same. I think that's a num number one thing for me. My goal this year, I've been working towards it, um, but I mm -hmm. go and I look through people's Instagram feeds and it's like, they're all over the board. And mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm getting with this photographer because I'm gonna go to them and they might have a good day, they might have a bad day. I don't know what yeah. I'm going to get. And that's never what a client should be doing when they're coming to you. They should know exactly what you're shooting. They should know exactly yeah. what your look and feel of your final edited images are gonna be like. And, and then you need to stick with that and then make it that way in all of your other ones. Even though I don't like Twitter, I have a Twitter and my Twitter is going to look exactly like my Instagram and my Facebook mm -hmm. is going to look exactly like my Instagram and my website is going to look just like my Instagram and having it look the same across the board. And it, it exactly. doesn't seem complicated, but I'm seeing photographers that aren't doing that. And yeah. it's just an easy concept and they want to see that same look and feel everywhere. Yeah. 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 We, we talk a lot about that in, in branding and marketing that um, sometimes you go to the, this different spaces, even they might have a marketing flyer and their business card and their website and their social media accounts. And they look like 10 different companies. Yeah. There's no constant thread. And then there's what's called the seed of doubt. So when there's incongruency, the consumer is like, mm, something's up like that inconsistency. So we don't know why we lost a sale or an opportunity. It's just because that seed of doubt was planted into the mind of that consumer that you're all over the place and they're looking for something specific and you grab them on something, but then 
they went to your website and it's not congruent with what you have on your Instagram or on your Facebook. You know, it looks like a whole different person, photographer. I mean, anything from branding colors and everything all the way down, like you said, to the style of how you edit and what you are shooting, you know, that, that consistency. That's great that you said that because I, I think more people need to, to realize that because I think as photographers, some of them are in such an artistic journey that they're like, Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I went to this workshop and learned how to do this crazy thing. Then I'm over here. Yeah. And, for consumer that, but yeah. do that on like a personal page not on your business page right yeah right. um from the very beginning like my husband and i've always said you are your business and your business is you and mm -hmm. your representation and it, like, let's take this away from just the business like on a personal level when i'm out in public especially if i'm on post if i'm around a lot of military generals you better act like your business because even mm -hmm. if you're having a bad day if you act up or you say something or you embarrass somebody, uh, they will not come to you as a business because yeah. they just don't want to work with that person. Um, and maybe because we're military and maybe because we've worked with, you know, some pretty high up individuals, you know, you just understand that that's, you know, you can't, there's no separation. If you've decided to own a business and you mm -hmm. want to run a successful business, that's how it is. And I've seen a lot of people say something like on their private page and then they wonder, well, you never know who's friends with who. Mm -hmm. um, the military yeah. community, even though it seems large, is very small. And if you say something, I could have been in El Paso and said something on my personal page to somebody who's friends with somebody here at Fort Stewart. When we moved here, mm -hmm. that person knows that that was said. Um, so yeah, we learned that. And going even back to branding, so we just bought a boat. I got a boat for Christmas. Uh, oh, that's, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to re, you know, redo it. It needs a little work, which is fine. I like projects. Um, and we're going to put my logo on my boat. And we've started nice. talking about colors. And I kind of want, and I, my husband thinks it's silly, but I'm like, you don't understand. Like if I'm out on the water, people with boats have a lot of money. And those are the mm -hmm. people that want as clients. And so presentation is important. So I, if I'm going to put you know, my logo or my name on my boat, the colors on my boat are going to match the colors on my website. You better mm -hmm. believe this because that's that right. representation. So will I, I don't want my business to ever take over me as a person. However, there's a very fine life. I think a very fine line between mm -hmm. how you manage your business and how you manage your life. Um, and so I think that goes back to that branding. Like when somebody mm -hmm. sees my work, and they go to my website and they listen to how I talk on my website. Mm -hmm. and then they come in, they see me in my studio. They feel like they already know me because they've already yeah, talked to me online or they've already seen a video or they've already heard me speak or, you know, they've seen pictures of me and, and they feel like they come in, they're like, well, we, we're so comfortable with you. And I'm like, that's mm -hmm. because you're supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're <laughs> supposed to be. <laughs> so I love it. you have to remember that. And then, and as a new photographer, I don't think they get told that very often. Mm. You're worried so. about what gear to get and what props to buy mm. and you know what business card design do I need? Let's talk about you as a person first and what you want your business to be. And then let's talk about all the rest of that. Yeah. True. yeah. It's excellent. So for someone that's just starting out, um, what's one piece of advice that you would give them that they absolutely need to know? Oh, have a heart to heart with your husband. Like really sit down and talk about that. Um, mm. Because I think if somebody had told me that I was going to go viral and that it was going to last as long as it did, it still does. My photo comes up every military photo. Um, and then they would talk about the workload that I was letting myself put on in El Paso. I was doing 35 to 40 newborns a month, plus doing any military related portraits that they needed on post, plus, you know, trying to do dishes, just generic house <laughs> stuff. I mean, yeah it really gets to you. So if you want to own a business, you need to have a serious heart to heart with your spouse first. Like, let's mm -hmm. talk about what you think is okay. Cause there's times where I'm sitting on my computer and my husband's like, you've been on your computer for eight hours. And like, well, I'm editing. Like it's, it is a job. And there, I mm -hmm. think there people believe like you were saying, like I work at home and I watch my husband leave every day. He puts his uniform on, he goes to work. And there have been a few remarks like, well, your wife just sits at home all day. <sighs> I don't sit at home all day. I work all day. I'm working at home. So what kind of expectations as a spouse? What does your spouse right. think that you're going to do? What do they think that 
you're going to be doing when you're sitting at home for eight to 10 hours. Cause there are some days that I have to do a lot more editing than others. It's going to take a little bit longer. Um, if I have a, a client that needs her photos like right away and I have to work really late, is it going to be okay if we just order pizza or do you really want a home cooked meal every night? So I think having that communication in your relationship is important. And I've seen, I have seen divorces and I'm sure we all have in our mm-hmm. community because yeah. we just let ourselves put that workload on so bad. And my husband and I were close. Like it was, it was challenging. And I think the move was hard, but it, it just, I mean, our marriage is so much better now. And we can sit and we can talk about what this expectation is. Do we, are we going to sit on the computer for eight hours a day? Um, I can find stuff to do on my computer. We all can. I can read my website or, I mean, there's always something I can do for my business every day, True. but does it have to be True. done right now? Yeah. And having yeah. that conversation and being open before you even begin the journey, because you, you know, yeah. once you're in, and God forbid you go viral, you're already in. It's too late. Yeah. Like you're already there. So you have to have that conversation ahead of time. Um, and I think some sometimes there's photographers that are just so focused on that that they'll lose a, a relationship because of it. Mm-hmm. And is that fair? Mm-hmm. You know, is that really what you want? So that's yeah, what I would say. Tough. Definitely sit down and talk. No, I love that. And we, we actually, we talk about that between us. It's just all about having good boundaries, healthy boundaries with everything, with personal, with professional and knowing when to say no and knowing again, kind of prioritizing what's important and what can go down the list a little bit later on. So I love that. I think as small business owners, a lot, a lot of times we forget the original purpose or the why we did all of it. And we get so caught up in the pursuit and the journey of achieving a goal that it then sabotages the why. Is yeah. so easy. Yeah. And then, you know, the higher you get, like if you start competing with your work, that's a whole nother process. Cause now I'm not just going to edit mm-hmm. for eight hours. I'm going to edit for like a week and I want my images mm-hmm. to be the best I can. Um, and having that communication beforehand, like, Hey, we're getting ready to come. Like dis- my district is next month. So, okay, well I have imaging next week. So, Hey, by the way, I'm going to be gone for a couple of days. Um, so then that was, that affects the relationship. Cause now you're not home to cook and clean and, my husband's not a cook, so I have to make sure he has something to eat if I go. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, uh, uh, it's a higher level because if you're working, you know, at a store down the street, you go to work, you work your eight hours, you come home, you don't have to bring your work home with you. Like that is right. you know, just how it is. Um, but I tell you that the sacrifices I think I have made for my business and my relationship, my husband does it too. Like he's in a new unit. They all like to go out to the bar. Well, my husband doesn't do that because he'd rather come home and mm-hmm. you know, sit on the couch and Netflix with me instead of go to the bar. So yeah. okay. it's a 50-50 thing. Like as much as I'm making some, he makes some too. Um, Good. And he has to understand that we're going to have pizza and frozen lasagna <laughs> for a week. <laughs> I have to do questions and stuff. <laughs> so, you know, is it worth it? And then even when we got stationed here and joining, you know, GPPA, my husband's like, why would you do that? And I'm like, because I need to still be with the professionals at the level that I want myself to be at. I need to be at a higher level. I, that's my personal goal for me. Um, could I not do that? Yes. And I, I didn't have to, um, but I wanted to, and that keeps me in the loop per se. And, but I didn't do it before I talked to him. Like we still had that conversation ahead of time because this is a volunteer position it's not a paid position and if Mm -hmm. I have to go you know and and do an event with them that's going to affect him at home so just having that open way of communication between the two of you is super important yeah I think that's key because initially we were talking about having that initial conversation but then it's like I think what keeps it healthy is continuing the conversation. Mm-hmm. Oh, There's yeah. probably a lot of people out there that whoever their spouse or significant other or partner that they have in their home, maybe the initial dream and goal and every, everybody sat down, they were excited initially, like, oh yeah, you're gonna do great. And then six months later, that resentment part mm-hmm. kind of kicks in or like, what are you doing? Sitting at home all day. And, and if there is no continuing dialogue, then attention, like we were talking about earlier on, that could break relationships and households if you don't have, if you don't circle back around and have that. So it's great that you have that. I think that's an incredible advice. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so I wanna shift gears and this is actually a pretty interesting question. You might be kind of relevant. Um, <laughs> if you had to relocate to a new area today, what? <laughs> with, with no clients oh, and no one knew, 
no one knew who you were and you had a thousand dollars in your business bank account what how would you use that thousand dollars a thousand dollars is not going to move my business uh, i have too many problems for that we <laughs> having that conversation because uh, my husband i know a few people know my husband just had spinal surgery um yeah. so we may or may not do 20 years in the military, depending on his health. Obviously, his health is the most important. Um, so we've started talking, like, I'm saying, like, opening a U.S. map and going, hmm, where do we want to retire? Because mm -hmm. if you are military, you won't really ever have a home. Um, mm -hmm. And we have really started talking about Florida. <laughs> not <laughs> Orlando, because back to that, I don't like big cities. Like, So where yeah. can I, you know, and then you have to start thinking about your business, because we went from a a location that could afford a price I think I wanted or needed or deserved mm -hmm. to one that doesn't want to pay that. So we've seen both sides of this. Uh, so now we know we want to kind of go somewhere that's close to a location that we could afford the prices that I want, um, but yet doesn't put me in the middle of a big city. So that's, that's a lot of challenge right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you said, not everywhere are we going to find a Louis Vuitton but I kind of need those clients and I want those clients, but then the people that can afford that probably your grandma and grandpa aren't going to have a newborn. So it's just kind right, of like, right. you know, where do we go? But we, I think we're going to probably end up somewhere in Florida um, because we, we like the water and, and I have to be near, I don't a boat now. I have to be near. Yeah. I, I was, I, I was going to interject that. I was going to say, you're probably going to be close somewhere that you can dock your boat. <laughs> I, have, I have to have a boat. Um, my husband's originally from like Naples and Fort Myers. So I have a feeling that we're going to end up somewhere near the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and probably I would say a little further south in Florida, because I don't know if I want to end up in Louisiana. I kind of want to get away from the alligators and, and some of the swamp <laughs> and be more closer to like, the beach. Um, but I, I definitely think Florida. And it's really funny. I grew up in Maryland and Florida was like a vacation mm -hmm. destination. And it was never mm -hmm. somewhere that I ever dreamed would be you know, a true possibility, like this is where we're going to mm -hmm. live. And when I saw that question, I was like, ah, oh, there's so many, like, I would love to go to Germany, but I don't think I'm getting there on a thousand dollars. So what would you, what would you do with that? If you, if you made that move, that hypothetical move to Florida, what would you do with, with that thousand dollars to, to, to ramp up your business? Yeah. Oh, I decorate my <laughs> boat because I'm going to be out in the water. <laughs> Like that is a. That's right, because she's mean, appealing to the boat owners. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I have a, I have an 18 foot boat, so that's a lot of um, prime real estate to market. It's like a, you know, a trailer or not a trailer. You know, those signs on the side of the road. Like that's essentially mm. what my boat is, and then what a better right. way to market yourself with a community that you know can afford your prices. Um, so yeah. I would, yeah. man, I would, my boat would be awesome. But once again, like a boat's expensive so i don't know how much i'd get out of that with a thousand dollars what's funny i, I have a, a um i have a real estate friend that where they where they go after and try to network and meet uh clients high-end clients is at boat shows that's yeah because so, the money's yeah, so, they, so they go to, so they don't even own a boat themselves but they, they go to boat go shows and they boats, network boats and rvs both of them like yeah. boats and rvs yep. if you can get into those community but what i'm finding is it's the bigger the boat, the older the person, kind of like nice cars, you know, like you always see oh, wow. this really, really nice sports car. And it's like an 80 year old guy that gets out of the car and you're like, oh, that's, he's not going to have a newborn. Like, <laughs> you know, he's not my client. <laughs> like, but it goes back to learning your client. Like I know that my clients probably aren't going to be in a 40 or 50 foot yacht. Like it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, I kind of yeah. need to stay back with the 18 foot boat, <laughs> like little boats like me. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's been, it's been an awesome way to market and, and it's a new that's way awesome. to market. It's never, yeah, it's, we cool. were landlocked in the desert for seven years. We had no idea what water was. So that's awesome. Well, it's <laughs> funny because we, we always use the analogy of making sure you're fishing in the right pond. So, <laughs> so I am, I you, am. <laughs> <laughs> right so, but you definitely are going directly you you have this but because so many people put themselves in the wrong circle of people and think that they're going to pull the big catch and it's like no you're fishing in the wrong pond doesn't matter you can have the best boat in the world the best reel the best everything and you're in the wrong location so you yeah. you've literally put yourself in a in different pond, different pond. <laughs> <laughs> or ocean. <laughs> so Tara, is there um, a success ritual or something that you do on a daily basis that contributes to your success? <laughs> <Drink> <laughs> <coffee>. <laughs> that's, 
um, coffee. <laughs> I, you know, my husband probably thinks I spend too much time on the internet, even though we're still here and I know that we've slowed down. But I definitely wake up in the morning and I check all of my messages. I check my email. Mm. Um, I have a Facebook message on my, my Facebook page. You can set up that message, that instant message now on Facebook mm -hmm. so that your clients feel that instant gratification because that's what they want. Um, and check my emails. And I mean, literally just kind of go through the process. I, I have ADHD and I'm, I'm super, it's weird to be an introvert and really hyper at the same time because you kind of want to go do something, but you kind of don't. Um, so I, I kind of manage all of my social media aspects first, go through it all. Like, you know, we go through the list what's missing, mm. what's pending, uh, have a cup of coffee, relax, like don't just jump into work. Life cannot be yeah. all about work. It just can't. It's not yeah. exciting. You will get burnt out if you're all about work. So I make yeah. sure everything's fine. If there's something pending, I do it. If not, then I can put that off for a couple hours and it'll be okay. Uh, a cup of coffee. We have a, we went and got one of those Keurigs. Those are, it's phenomenal coming from somebody that it's a lifesaver. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. Like I can get as much coffee as I want one cup at a time. This is awesome. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> have, yeah. Have that moment. Don't, you know, I check it, but it's not like I throw myself right into work. Like I, I just yeah. kind of gradually get into it and, you know, we own our own business. And at the end of the day, we run our own speed. Nobody says mm -hmm. I have to wake up like a jackrabbit. Like I can kind of just slowly mosey and get into it. And, and maybe it's because we live out here in the country and we live a little slower pace. Um, and I also have chickens. So I have to go out and have to feed my chickens in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The success ritual. Feed your, so chickens. feed your chickens and then have your coffee and, and yeah. slowly get into I like that. I like that. <laughs> Well, and there is, for I'm, you, I'm, if you read online, there's a, a new, I don't want to say it's new. So my husband's Native American. So we have a little mm -hmm. bit of a, a different, I think, mindset. But there's a, a thing called grounding, where you go out and mm -hmm. you walk in your barefoot backyard, like just enjoy the life that you have and, and get away because owning your own business is so stressful. Like, it's so stressful. We're constantly wearing a thousand different hats, trying to manage people on our own. We don't, like, if you don't have an assistant, it's you. Like, you have to do it all. I don't have an assistant. I have to do everything. So if I'm going to constantly, I know from about noon to about five o'clock, I'm going to be humping. Like, why mm -hmm. should I do that at nine o'clock in the morning? Like, let me go from nine to 12, slowly wake up, take a shower, enjoy my morning. Um, usually everybody's gone. So the house is nice and quiet. Like enjoy that moment. Like go out, walk outside. If it's nice outside, go walk around, get out. Mm -hmm. Especially as an entrepreneur, we sit all the time. We're always sitting at a yes. desk or sitting on the couch or we're sitting on our bed editing. Like we're always in front of our computer. There's yes. always a screen in my face. Like, no, yeah. I want to take a few minutes to just kind of enjoy it my life and enjoy air fresh air <laughs> not i love it it's so, yeah. so valuable so valuable yeah. now for you is there a business uh resource or business tool that you can't live without that you love and you <laughs> use in your in okay <laughs> <laughs> yes. um so my husband with his schedule and my schedule being super super crazy the initial reason we chose 17 hats for the business is because it connected to google calendar so my husband and I have both have um, Samsung phones and we have our calendar synced on our phone. So everything he puts on his calendar, I see, and then everything I put on that calendar, he sees. So with 17 nice. hats, every we client, this, yep. yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> because going back to that communication with your husband, like there's times where, you know, he needs an answer because the army needs an answer. Like he has a horrible time remembering my birthday and our anniversary. Like he just, it's, it's just how it is. So he needs to call me right away to get that answer because he's in somebody's office and he can't get a hold of me. And he knows that I'm sitting at home in his mind sometimes, I think doing nothing. Um, and so now he can look at his phone, go to the calendar, see, oh, she's in a newborn session. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the session, I even block off the full three hours of the newborn session. And he's like, okay, well, she'll be done at this time. So at least he knows. Um, and that's really important because when you can't get a hold of your spouse in a, in a moment where you need an answer, the mm -hmm. first response as a, as a spouse is to get mad. Like, why can't I get all of them? What are they doing? Yeah. Why aren't they answering? Yeah. Like, whether you think you're going to get mad or not, you do. So avoid the <laughs> argument altogether. And um, exactly. that's why we started 17 Hats. And then having it all in one location, I'm very mm -hmm. scatterbrained. There are days where, I don't know, up and down. And being able to have all of my client information in one location is 
super awesome, like super amazing. Awesome. And so I've been with them oh. for a few years, no urge to leave. Like love it. Yeah. Love to yeah. hear that. Yeah. And last but not least, what are you working on now and how can people get in touch with you? <laughs> what am I working on now? Babies, 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 and more babies. We have like for a long time, January was my slow month. I think everybody just gets over Christmas. They're still paying off, you know, whatever credit bill they made for themselves at Christmas. Not quite tax season. So January was slow. But here, like, I don't know if somebody came home from a deployment like nine months ago because it's been, I got babies everywhere. And then imaging is next week. So I'm actually working at imaging this year. I volunteered to help be one of their photographers. So I'll be, if anybody's attending, I'll be in and out taking photos of a lot of the classes. Um, awesome. Yeah, I think volunteer is important. Like volunteer, volunteer. The, they're opening a brand new USO here at Fort Stewart. They totally revamped the entire building. Um, USO is a huge organization. I'm sure everybody's heard of USO. And they're opening it, and I'm going to be their photographer. So I'll be there for their wow. grand opening, awesome. and I'll get to know all the soldiers. Once again, it's a volunteer position, but I will get to know so many people right. because of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes. I think you're networking. Like, is this going to help me? Is it going to help them? Yeah, let me do it. So volunteer and then volunteering and imaging. And then I'm going to come back from imaging and literally probably have like six newborns the end of yep. the end of January. Wow. So we're going to do lots wow. of babies and then hopefully it's going to warm up and we can start going outside. And the ability to have the boat gives a whole new genre to me. I can go do a lot of um, water photography. So I'm actually thinking yes. of getting a casing for my camera. I don't know if I'd necessarily want to swim with the sharks. But if I could find a way to put my camera on a pole and put the pole down in the water, like mm -hmm. I think we're going to play with a lot of underwater photography. It's a new concept. Yeah, it's That's a new awesome. concept. Uh, I don't know if I'm ever really going to do like maternity underwater kind of things, but there's so much to take pictures of out here. Savannah is beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. The local community is beautiful. Old buildings. The Spanish moss is amazing. So I'm going to, I'm going to go out and actually take pictures of where I live. I think that's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, thank you so much. This has been amazing. Like we have had so much knowledge bombs oh, yeah. throughout this entire <laughs> time. And um, we're just so grateful that you took the time to spend with us. And we're so excited to see what happens for you this year. It just sounds like you have so much going on and really looking forward to, to the future. Thank <music> you.